morning, everyone. Hope everyone's doing well today on this Tuesday, September um, 20th, 2022. Welcome to the Dream Big Today Bible Study. I'm Michelle and always good to be on here and uh, to dig deep into the Word of God. Um, and see what he would show us today. And uh, it's always good to do that and uh, to, to watch and listen to programs that will help build you up spiritually. And also, it's very important to dig into the word on your own, you know, at your, in your own time. And uh, God will reveal things to you that you need to know. And uh, he is so good. And he will open the knowledge of his word to us. When we seek him, we will find him. And uh, we open the door of our hearts to him. And he comes and he um, has fellowship with us. And we dine on the word of God, uh, the living word of God, the word of life, the bread of life. And uh, this morning... Um, I just wanted to read um, just some out of this. Uh, well, it's the one year daily Bible companion. And uh, it just kind of goes uh, daily. And it kind of just uh, hits the highlights of uh, the meaning of a lot of the scriptures. And uh, this morning in the Old Testament part in Isaiah 35, Isaiah 35 is much different from the foregoing chapters. Why? In chapters 1 through 34, Isaiah has delivered a message of judgment on all nations for rejecting God. Now Isaiah breaks through with a vision of beauty and encouragement. God is just as thorough in his mercy as he is severe in his judgment. This chapter is a beautiful picture of the final kingdom in which God will establish his justice and destroy all evil. Chapter 34 spoke of great distress when God will judge all people for their actions. Chapter 35 pictures the days when life will be peaceful at last and everything will be made right. Isn't that beautiful to think of? And it will happen. And the way of holiness in verses 8 through 10 is the way that righteous pilgrims will take from the desert of suffering to Zion. It is found only by following God. Only the redeemed will travel God's highway. They will be protected from wicked travelers and harmful animals. God's word is so beautiful. He has so many good things for us, so many good promises, and uh, it's just, I love it. So we're going to go ahead and get into the word in the Old Testament. Uh, so Isaiah 37, 1, verse 1 through 38, 22. And so we're going to start in... Oh, sorry, that I'm on the wrong day in my Bible. I'm on tomorrow's, but let me flip back over. I've got my outline here that helps to keep me in check. So. Okay, let's see now. September 20th, Isaiah 33, 10 through 36, 22. And so um, the Lord delivers Zion. We're going to... Uh, read about that and in 10 through 10 through 13 the lord announces his fire of judgment god's judgment will come like fire and the wicked and worthless works of men will be like chaff and stubble that is quickly and ferociously burned in the fire his all-consuming fire you know the fire the holy fire of god is such a powerful thing and then in verse 14 through 19, fearful sinner and blessed saints. So let's read 14 through 16. Uh, 
Okay. Um, who can live with this devouring fire, they cry. Who can survive this all-consuming fire? Those who are honest and fair and refuse to profit by fraud, who stay far away from bribes, who refuse to listen to those who plot murder, who shut their eyes to all enticement to do wrong. These are the ones who will dwell on high. The rocks of the mountains will be their fortress. Food will be supplied to them and they will have water in abundance. And I think that is so beautiful. And, you know, it still rings true today. You know, we need to uh, live lives of integrity and um, do what is pleasing to the Lord and make good, healthy choices for ourselves, because that has a ripple effect. The choices we make and the things we do have a ripple effect on our families, and friends, and this world in general. And we need to think about things before we do them and, uh, you know, put it on the scale of, you know, is, is it a godly thing to do or is it not a godly thing to do? You know, what does the word say? If the word says and points you away from that thing, run get away from it don't even subject yourself to it you know we need to be careful about the things we watch and listen to and take in to our our spirits because that's very important we need to uh place a guard over our hearts and so we will not sin against god and stay in the word and stay in prayer and strive to live a life of holiness and then uh Let's see. Then in verse 17, that's very beautiful too. Your eyes will see the king in all his splendor. Isn't that just beautiful? Just think about that day when we will finally get to see the Lord Jesus in all his splendor. It's going to be amazing. And, um, and you will see a land that stretches into the distance. Okay, uh, then in verse 20 through 24, Zion is delivered and blessed. And let's read verses 21 and 22. The Lord will be our mighty one. He will, sorry, I'm trying to get my cat from coming up here. Garfield. in the chair you'll get right here in the middle of of everything and i just really don't want that this morning so okay uh verse 21 the lord will be our mighty one he will be like a wide river of protection that no enemy can cross that no enemy ship can sail upon for the Lord is our judge, our lawgiver, and our king. He will care for us and save us. And that is so comforting. You know, do you just think about this? The Lord will be our mighty one. He is the mighty one. A wide river of protection. That's so powerful. That no enemy can cross. For the Lord is our judge, our lawgiver, our king. He will care for us and save us. He is all these things and more. He's, he cares for us every day. And he is a good father. And we, we are in good hands when we are in his hands. Um, when God saves he does it in unlikely ways the majestic lord brings unexpected blessing this chapter is so full of compelling imagery and then isaiah 34 the indignation of the lord against all nations one through four the fury and the completeness of the judgment of the lord Jesus and many Old Testament prophets plainly told us of a coming time he called the Great Tribulation, Matthew 24, 21, when because of the judgment of God, conditions on earth would be the worst human history had ever seen. 
Revelations chapter 6, 8 through 9, and 16 through 18 describe this horrific time when there will be a widespread ecological, economical, cosmic, and human catastrophe on a level never before known in history. And uh, I believe that we're going to, uh, God's people are going to, he's going to take us out before then, and uh, we will be able to escape all of that. And uh, in uh, five through seven, the great bloodshed at the judgment of the Lord. The indignation of the Lord finds its final fulfillment in the battle of Armageddon, which will be a terribly bloody affair. That's in Revelations 14 through 20. And in 8 through 10, the land is made desolate. 11 through 15, the land is inhabited only by animals of the wilderness. And let's read some of that. Okay. <clears throat> For God will measure that land carefully. He will measure it for chaos and destruction. It will be called the land of nothing. And all its nobles will soon be gone. And then in 16 through 17, the surety of the judgments of the Lord. This time of great tribulation is certainly coming upon the earth. We know that it will come because God has it in his word and he doesn't lie and it will come. And, uh, you know, a lot of people in the world don't believe it. You know, those who don't honor and value God and the word of God, they don't believe it. And they're going to be, uh, if they're alive during that time, they're going to be believers because they'll see it with their eyes unfold. And uh, let's see, <clears throat> we must be ready and pray always that we may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the son of man. And that Luke 21, 36 is reference to that. We always have to be ready to give an account to God. None of us knows when our last day on earth will be. Only God knows that. And when we stand before him, you know, we want to hear him say, well done, my good and faithful servant. We don't want to hear him say, depart from me. I never knew you. Those are the worst words that could ever be said. God could ever say to a person. We have to um, keep our hearts right before God every day, every moment. And then in Isaiah 35, the highway of holiness. In verse 2, the land is restored. Okay, let's read a little bit of that. Yes, there will be an abundance of flowers and singing and joy. There the Lord will display his glory the splendor of our God. And I think that's so beautiful. The glory and the splendor of God. Uh, and then in three through four, the weak people are strengthened. Let's read that. With this news, strengthen those who have tired hands and encourage those who have weak knees. Say to those with fearful hearts, be strong and do not fear. For your God is coming to destroy your enemies. He is coming to save you. Oh, the Lord of heaven's armies. We use our hands to work with. Those with weak hands are not working for the Lord as they should. We use our knees both to progress with and to pray with. Those with feeble knees are not progressing with the Lord and praying as they should. In our present trials, we need the strong hope of the Lord to overcome our fearful hearts. Our fearful hearts are not helped by a vain, vague optimism. They are helped by the assured confidence that he will come and save. He will come and save us. And in five through six, the sick and the disease are healed. Let's read about that. And when he comes, he will open the eyes of the blind. 
and unplug the ears of the deaf. The lame will leap like a deer and those who cannot speak will sing for joy. I love that so much, you know, because things that are broken in people's lives physically, you know, God, God can heal those things. He touches those things and he heals them. And uh, when John the Baptist was in prison, he became discouraged and began to wonder if Jesus was the Messiah he had proclaimed him to be. When John's disciples brought this question to Jesus, he replied, go and tell John the things which you hear and see. And just what we read here, the blind see and the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear, the dead are raised up and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he who is not offended because of me. Matthew 11, four through six. Jesus, the Messiah had come to bring God's salvation and that would be accompanied by miraculous power. And then in eight through 10, a highway of holiness is made for God's people. The construction of this highway of holiness was the greatest engineering feat ever accomplished. Engineering has done much to tunnel mountains and bridge abysses, but the greatest triumph of engineering is that which was made, which made a way from sin to holiness, from death to life, from condemnation to perfection. Who could make a road over the mountains of our iniquities but Almighty God? None but the Lord of love would have wished it. None but the God of wisdom could have devised it. None but the God of power could have carried it. And that's a great quote by Spurgeon. And then in Isaiah 36, a demoralizing attack on faith. Isaiah 36 through 39 are a historical narrative section of Isaiah. These chapters are paralleled in 2 Kings 18, 13, 20, 9, through 20, 19, and tell us the story of the godly king Hezekiah. Isaiah 36 and 37 describe the Lord's work against the Assyrian threat. Isaiah 38 and 39 describe the response to the Babylonian threat. And so we read about in one through three, um, officials from King Hezekiah's government meet the general of the armies of Assyria. And so the, and so this Assyrian commander seems to be in complete command of the situation. He can walk right into the city of Jerusalem and stand at the crucial water supply which would be Jerusalem's lifeline in a siege attack. As he stands there, three officials from Hezekiah's government come to meet him. And in four through six, the Assyrian commander speaks against Judah's trust in the alliance with Egypt. The Lord wanted Judah to trust him instead of Egypt. And so uh, in a sense, the commander is speaking the truth. God wanted Judah to have no confidence in e Egypt at all. But the commander isn't doing it to bring Judah to a firm trust in the Lord God, but to completely demoralize Judah and drive them to despair. Satan attacks us the same way. Often when he tells the truth, you are such a rotten sinner. He never does it to lead us to a firm trust in the Lord our God. Jesus died for sinners. So if I'm a rotten sinner, Jesus died to forgive and free me. Instead, Satan's strategy is always to demoralize and drive us to despair. You know, we know that he comes not but for to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus came to give us life and life abundantly. And we have, we have power over the devil because of the blood of Jesus that's applied to our lives. He paid the price for our sin 
on the cross. He took it all upon himself. Thank God. Praise the name of the living God that he loved us all enough to send his only son that whosoever believes in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. And then in seven through nine, the commander speaks against, okay, hold on a second, against Judah's trust in God and against the army of Judah. Satan doesn't want to do battle with you. There's a strong chance you will win. And number two, win or lose, the battle can draw you closer to the Lord. Number three, what the Lord does in your life through the battle can be a great blessing for other people. Satan would rather try to talk you into giving up. So like Elizabeth says, that little stink bug gets on your shoulder and he's whispering in your ear, you're not going to make it. You're, you can't do this. You know, you, you're terrible. You, you, you know, just all these con condemning things that he would try to bring against us. We need to stand against him and say, be gone, Satan, in the name of Jesus, just like Jesus did to him and said to him in the Bible. And he has to leave. He has to, you know, he has to go. And he has no authority over us. Satan used this strategy against Jesus during his temptation in the wilderness. When Satan promised Jesus all the kingdoms of the world in ex exchange for Jesus' worship, Satan was trying to avoid the fight and trying to talk Jesus into giving up. Luke 4, 5 through 8. It didn't work with Jesus and it shouldn't work with us. And then in verse 10, the commander tells them that the Lord God of Israel is on his side. Um, and then... In 11, the three delegates are afraid that the people will believe the Assyrians' lies and wanted to stop the people from hearing his words. In 12, lies are always exposed. The Assyrian now shows his filthiness and vulgarity. And we're not going to go through all of, of um, read all these uh, scriptures that I'm referring to, you know, for lack of time, but uh, we... Go back through there. I mean, uh, if you haven't already had a chance to read today's uh, daily Bible readings, um, it will explain it in more detail when you do that. And then um, in 13 through 20, in defiance, the Assyrian shouts even louder, making a big scene. Evil loves to make a ruckus. In his second speech, the Assyrian accuses God's chosen king of lying and even worse, blasphemes God. And in 20 through, 21 through 22, despite Hezekiah's delegates' lack of faith in their fellow Jews, the people respond correctly to the Assyrians' lies. They hold their peace. When Satan throws lies in our face, ignore them. They are just lies. That's all he knows how to do. Um, and then in Galatians 5, 13 through 26, standing fast in the liberty of Jesus. And then 13 through 15, using liberty to love each other. The at, this attitude of service towards one another fulfills the great commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself, and it keeps us from destroying ourselves through strife. Beware lest you, you be consumed by one another. And in 16 through 18, using liberty to walk in holy living. When someone walks in the spirit, they listen to what the Holy Spirit says as he guides us in the path and nature of Jesus. And in 19 through 21, Examples of the works of the flesh that walking in the spirit helps us to overcome. Let's see here. Um, 2021. 20, okay. Um, okay. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. 
sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. And then, um, and then 22 through 23, examples of the fruit of the spirit that walking in the spirit produces in our life. Let's read that. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Um, and then keeping in step with the spirit is uh, 24 through 26. And uh, so we need to strive to produce good fruit in our lives. You know, Jesus talked about, you know, the, the tree that doesn't bear fruit will be cut down. And we don't want that to happen to us. You know, uh, we want to live a fruitful life and display good fruit um, with the things that we say and do and the way we live. And uh, that will point others to God. And, you know, we're not going to be perfect. There's going to be times when we're going to mess up, you know, and we just have to go before the Lord and ask him to forgive us. You know, if we spoke harshly to someone, if we were in a bad mood, you know, God understands that we're human and uh, he will forgive us. And, uh, you know, sometimes it's harder. Uh, it, or, well, it is it's harder for you know, the person, you know, that we, if we offend anyone, it can be hard to, uh, for them to overcome, you know, unless they take it to the Lord and, uh, and help him or have him help them, you know, like we all have to do because we live in a fallen world. We're going to have people speak harshly to us. We're going to have people treat us unkindly. And that can even come, you know, like I was saying from, a Christian, but, you know, we just have to walk in grace and realize every day that, you know, nobody's perfect. And Jesus was the only one that was perfect. And when we, uh, get offended, we need to ask the Lord to help us to overcome that. And he will. And then, uh, In Psalm today, our Psalm is 64, 1 through 10. Um, it's a Psalm of David. And he's, uh, he's talking to the Lord, pouring out his heart about how his enemies are attacking him. And... Um, and then uh, in verse seven, but God himself will shoot them with his arrows, suddenly striking them down. Their own tongues will ruin them and all who see them will shake their heads in scorn. Then everyone will be afraid. They will proclaim the mighty acts of God and realize all the amazing things he does. The godly will rejoice in the Lord and find shelter in him. And those who do what is right will praise him. And then in Proverbs 23, 23, our wisdom nugget today, get the truth and never sell it. Also get wisdom, discipline, and good judgment. Those are good things for us to have. And uh, I wanted to come back to um, the, uh, the Old Testament verses, you know, that we're talking about the mighty king, king of Israel. And it made me think of a song that it was popular, I think in the late nineties and early two thousands, but it's a, um, 
you can look it up on YouTube and there's a, really some fun, it's a messianic uh, uh, type song. And the, the lyrics are, and the Lord will cause his glorious voice to be heard. And you shall have a song in the night. He gives us song, songs in the night. Come to the mountain of the Lord and see his glory and his might. Yes, the Lord shall cause his glorious voice to be heard and you shall have a song in the night. He gives us songs during the day too. You know, whenever we're, uh, just a little side note here. You know, whenever we feel a song bubbling up within us, you know, we can just sing it out, sing it to the Lord and just praise him in that moment. You know, his praise shall continually be in our mouths. But sometimes there's a song that we, we, we can just sing out to him. But um, come to the mountain of the Lord, see his glory and his might. He's the mighty one of Israel, the mighty one of Israel. His voice shall be heard in the power of his words, the mighty one of Israel. And this song talks about the eyes of the blind shall be open and shall see. The ears of the deaf shall hear. The lame man shall jump and shall leap as the heart. The tongue of the dumb shall speak. And these are all beautiful things that God can do for people. He loves us, you know, and, and he, he sees the things that we deal with every day. And he is there always. We are always in his hands. And uh, we, we can never be snatched out of his hand. And uh, he's always with us. And he loves us so very, very much. So, well, that brings us to the close of today's study. And uh, thank you all for watching. And I'm, I plan on being on here tomorrow, too. And so hopefully we'll see you then. And I hope that everyone enjoys their day and stay awesome. Bye-bye.